Hello and welcome to the Prepared and More YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about water volume. There may be several reasons why you may need to determine how much water volume you have coming from a particular source. So we're going to talk about it here by one of my outside spigots at my place. But there's several different ways you could use this. If you have a spring on your property and you want to determine how much water is coming out of that, if you have a way to collect that water over a certain period of time like we'll show here in just a minute, then you can measure the amount of water that's coming out of your spring. If you want to determine how much water you have, volume and pressure for a sprinkler system that you want to install, or if you need to know how much your well is putting out, all these questions can simply be answered using today's information. So let's begin talking about water volume. First thing we do, uh, talk about tools. Uh, the, the easiest tool that you can have uh, is simply a one gallon jug. This is a, a jug that I keep around the house for different purposes, but it's just a one gallon milk type jug that we could use, or we could use a five gallon bucket. Again, another easy tool. There's also a couple of things you could purchase. If you're a professional inspector like I am, you could actually spend 125 bucks and get a, a professional water volume meter. But that's really not necessary. You actually could use these uh, free items, potentially, just as effective as you could this professional meter. But uh, probably the easiest way to do it, if you have a measuring out of a spigot or a hose, is to get one of these things, a uh, water flow meter. Uh, I bought this off Amazon for about uh, $25. So another uh, good tool that we'll use. Uh, we'll also use these here in just a minute, but the other thing you're going to need is you're going to need uh, potentially your phone or a timer of some type. So let's start talking about these different methods. The first and easiest way to determine if you have a spigot that you can put it on, take an item like this. We'll simply screw it onto our spigot here. Once we get that uh, spun on there and tight, we'll make sure it's on and then we'll make sure it's on the correct setting. This meter actually has uh, several different settings it can have. We want to know the gallons per minute is the common way uh, that we would measure this, but it'll measure just uh, water volume, gallons coming out and that type of thing. But I've got it on the gallons per minute setting. It does take a small battery. I'm going to move some of these items out of the way because we're going to have a lot of water coming out of there. And then I simply just turn on my spigot all the way. In this case, it's going to tell me that I'm getting 5.6 gallons per minute. At the end there, it got up to 5.7. So about 5.6, 5.7 gallons per minute. That's really an easy way to do it, but you do have to spend 25 bucks to get the meter. You could put this on the end of a water hose and see how much water you're, you're getting to water your garden or uh, a yard sprinkler, those types of things. If you're wanting to determine how much water your well can put out, I'm on a rural location, where I have a water well, uh, what you want to do is you want to pick a spigot that's as close to your well as possible. And uh, if you have one actually at your well, that's great. Use that. But you're also going to want to make sure you're draining at least two water sources at the same time and measuring both. Because your well should well be able to keep up with this spigot, but it might not keep up if you had two spigots going. So if I were going to water, excuse me, measure the water coming from my well, okay, and how much well uh, water I could get, then I would do this at two locations at the exact same time. And uh, so you could put one, you could put the meter on here, and then you could do the other well uh, spigot using the other method we're gonna show you. So that brings us to the second method we'll talk about here, and that is simply the bucket method. And we're simply gonna uh, fill this bucket to a predetermined level. I've determined that this five gallon bucket, this ring right here is the five gallon level. So we're going to simply fill this bucket to that level and measure how long it takes. Then we'll use a simple math formula uh, to figure that out. So I've got my, my, watt, my clock open here uh, to stopwatch function on my phone. And at the same time I press start is the same time I'm going to open up my spigot here. And then we're going to time how long it takes to get to this five gallon mark. So simply Start and stop and open at the same time. Make sure your spigot is fully open. We're going to keep track of that time. This same thing can be done just using a one gallon. It won't be quite as accurate, 
but you could time the amount of time it takes to fill one gallon. In my case, uh, it's a little more accurate, so we're gonna use the five gallon uh, here. I'm waiting it for it to get just to my five gallon mark here, about another five seconds. When it got to my five gallon mark, I turned it off, I hit stop. I've got 46 seconds to fill a five gallon bucket. Let's see what the math there tells us on that. So the simple math is I've got 46 seconds. I'm gonna go to my calculator here. I'm gonna take the five gallons, so I'm gonna put five for five gallons of water, divided by 46, my number of seconds, and I get 0 0.10869565. But all I do then is multiply that times 60, the number of seconds in a minute, and I get 6.5 approximately gallons per minute. So uh, using this method, we came up with 6.5. Using our meter, we were about 5.7. So you see the results aren't exact, but they do give you a good range of volume. So we've talked about these two methods. The last thing we want to talk about is use specifically a method of, of measuring when uh, you need to know uh, like sprinkler pressure and that type of thing. If you're going to put in sprinklers to water your garden, uh, to water your yard and that type of thing, uh, you need to maintain a certain amount of pressure uh, within the system so that the heads will activate. And so to do that, you have to do something a little bit different. So in this case, we're going to use uh, just a simple splitter here. So we have a splitter easily available at your home and garden store and then a pressure gauge. Uh, it's about $12 on Amazon. We'll have the link uh, to that down in the comments. So uh, the link to all these products will be available in the comments if you want to look down there. So we're going to put our pressure meter on. We're going to screw that onto our spigot here. What we want to know is how much water volume we have while still maintaining 30 pounds of pressure. That 30 pounds of pressure is important because that pressure is needed to properly operate the sprinkler system. So what we're gonna do, make sure both of these are closed. They're both closed. I'm gonna turn on my water all the way. Then on the pressure side, I'm gonna open it up all the way. I see that I've got about 45 PSI pressure. That's about standard for a rural home. If you're in the city, you may have 60 or 70 pounds of pressure. But for us out here, rural 45 is about, about average. I'm then gonna take my pressure meter here. I'm gonna put it on this side. And if again, you don't have one of these pressure meters here, or water flow meters, I should say. This is a water flow meter, this is a pressure meter. If you don't have one of the water flow meters, you could again do the bucket method or you could do the jug method. But what we're gonna do, is so we're gonna turn this on now on this side, this is fully on over here, and we're at 45. We're gonna turn this side on until the gauge gets to 30. We're gonna let the water flow, and then we will see what the rate is then. So with the water on, I'm gonna continue to turn on gently until my pressure's at 30. So this is not fully on, it's only partially on. This side is at 30, and my rate per minute now is 4.1. So as you can see, when we don't fully open this up, we do maintain pressure in the system, but we also don't have as much volume. Well, that's the volume you're gonna need, in this case 4.1, to determine if this is adequate pressure and volume for your sprinkler system, if you're gonna do a garden, soaker hose, those types of things uh, that you would need to measure that on. So today we've talked about uh, a couple of different things. We've talked about how to measure your water flow or your water volume. We've also talked about water pressure and different scenarios and techniques where you might use this. Hopefully you've enjoyed our video today. If you have, hit the like button. Also subscribe to our channel and also watch some of our other videos. We have a whole series of videos about water, water wells, water testing, those types of things. And so we hope you'll look at those videos too. Down in the comments section right below, you'll find the links to all the different products that we've used in this video as well as links to other good information. So make sure you check out those links, like and subscribe our channel. Thank you.